KC15 is now in storm mode. Good morning. I'm Meredith Barrick. We are in storm mode this Monday morning as our weather authority tracks severe weather across several parts of our viewing area. Let's check in right away with Chief Meteorologist Char Charlie Shortino. Good morning, Charlie. Good morning. It's been a long morning. A lot of severe weather. Just about every county in our viewing area affected by severe weather or uh, had at least some sort of watch or warning posted. Uh, all the watches, uh, or all the warnings, I should say, for Dane County, uh, Rock County, on toward Sauk County, and everything to the west uh, have expired now. We still do have a severe thunderstorm warning in effect for a portion of our viewing area, the eastern part of uh, Jefferson County and Walworth County, uh, still included in that severe thunderstorm warning until 1145. On radar right now, you can see uh, we had a very organized line of thunderstorms move through southern Wisconsin. This is where the severe, thun the severe uh, weather was mainly seen over the southwest part of the state. Gusty winds along this uh, bow echo that moved quickly through. But once it got into south central Wisconsin, we've lost a lot of the organization uh, of this line of thunderstorms. Still some briefly heavy rainfall and gusty winds possible with some of the thunderstorms. Uh, they are moving off to the east now. Looks like we'll have a reasonably quiet period as far as severe weather goes. Still some on again, off again showers and thunderstorms uh, during the afternoon. And we still are under an enhanced risk of severe weather this afternoon. We could have uh, more sporadic severe weather, we'll call it, uh, developing this afternoon. And we'll definitely keep you updated on that as we move through the afternoon. But things starting to quiet down a little bit now as we head toward the midday. Meredith? As Charlie just mentioned, several parts of the viewing area have been experiencing heavy rain. This video was shot in Dodgeville about an hour and a half ago. As you can see, there's some standing water along the roads and a little bit of flooding in the streets. Here's that video. Our photographer who shot this says he could only see about five feet in front of him as he was driving. And here's a look at the heavy rain coming down in Madison. This video was shot at Elver, Elver Park. About an hour ago, you can see the wind is very strong. Now, some of our viewers are posting pictures of severe weather in their area. Taylor sent us this photo of rain coming down near Richland Center. And here's a picture Nick sent us from Cuba City. It appears the wind has blown over his new fence. And now let's take a look at one more viewer. Michelle describes this as the calm before the storm in Dane. If you have any photos or videos you'd like to share with us, head to our Facebook page, NBC15. And remember, NBC15 is the weather authority. We have a 24-hour weather channel that airs on digital channel 15.2 and on charter at channel 247. It also streams at NBC15.com and at stormmode.com. You can also get warning information on your cell phone. If you have an iPhone or Android, then download our free WMTV app. And don't forget, we post updates on Twitter and Facebook. You'll find those easy links on our homepage at NBC15.com. Taking a turn now, new at 11, a 49-year-old Wanaki man is dead after he lost control of his motorcycle. The crash happened last night in the town of Westport. Authorities say the man was driving fast, lost control, and was thrown from the motorcycle. He was not wearing a helmet and suffered a severe head injury. His name has not yet been released. And a 13-year-old boy has drowned in the Wisconsin River near Merrill. The Merrill Fire Department says it got a call about a possible drowning near a local park yesterday afternoon. The teen's body was recovered four hours later, about 15 feet from where he went under. Authorities say debris on the river's bottom and strong currents complicated the search. The boy had been swimming with his mother and two friends. Around the nation, an emotional scene in Charleston, South Carolina last night. Thousands marching across the city's main bridge for the nine victims of last week's church shooting. It came just hours after that church reopened its doors for the first time since the massacre. Here's NBC's Craig Melvin. From heartbreak to healing, thousands took to the streets and highways of Charleston, walking in a massive unity chain Sunday night. Just hours after Mother Emanuel Church opened its doors for its first worship service since the tragedy. A lot of folk expected us to do something strange and to break out in a riot. Well, they just don't know us. 
Among the crowd, South Carolina's governor, one of its senators, and the longtime mayor of Charleston. It broke our hearts in Charleston, but it's broken hearts in America. Some who lost family members in the attack, like Alana Simmons, just had to be there. My grandfather loved Charleston, and to see what an example they have been to the nation, his, his heart would just be so full. Across the city, bells tolled at many of Charleston's other historic churches for nine minutes, one for each victim, including the church where the alleged shooter's family worshiped. We're in solidarity with the nine families who lost loved ones, and we stand in amazement at the gift of forgiveness that they've already expressed in such an open way. Meanwhile, over the weekend, more disturbing images surfaced of 21-year-old Dylan Roof posing with guns, Confederate flags, and at many sites dedicated to the history of the Confederacy. There's also a 2,500-word manifesto that perhaps lays out his motive for mass murder. Sources have attributed it to Roof, but it has not yet been verified by NBC News, with passages including, quote, someone has to have the bravery to take it to the real world, and I guess that has to be me. Roof's apparent obsession with the Confederate battle flag has helped inspire a MoveOn.org petition to remove the flag from all government locations in South Carolina. That was Craig Melvin reporting that petition now has more than 4,800,000 ,000 signatures. It calls the Confederate flag not a symbol of Southern pride, but rather a symbol of rebellion and racism and labels Roth a, quote, racist terrorist. In other national news this morning, witnesses in the New York town of Owls had say they've seen a surge of police activity connected to the search for two fugitives who escaped from a prison earlier this month. Law enforcement officials rolled into town early this morning. Sources say a nearby campground reported a break-in, and shortly afterward, someone reported seeing a person run away from the scene. Residents report seeing helicopters conducting an intense search as checkpoints are being set up on area roads. Here's an update to a story we brought you earlier this month. Two Beloit men are in police custody after a shooting at a gas station on Shapir Road. Police say last night they arrested Ricardo Holloway in Beloit. They found heroin and marijuana in his possession. Holloway is being held at the Rock County Jail for attempted homicide and a drug warrant. Beloit, also, Beloit police also say 31-year-old Maureen Williams turned himself in for the same attempted homicide. 22-year-old DeMonte Green was shot during the incident, which happened back on June 4th. And a 69-year-old Beloit man is in custody as police investigate the death of a 51-year-old who was found dead over the weekend. Percy Oliver was arrested following the investigation into the stabbing death of David Banks. The Beloit Police Department says they found Banks yesterday on the 500 block of East Grand Avenue. The department says additional charges could come depending on results of evidence analysis. They say Oliver has an extensive arrest record with the FBI and is a convicted felon. They believe the two men knew each other. Middleton police are asking for your help in identifying persons of interest in a burglary. Take a look at your screen. Yesterday morning, two men broke into an unlocked home. The homeowners woke up and confronted the suspects who then ran away.